Hey guys, this is Pistols O'Brien. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking it kind of easy and watch as I create this image of Spider-Man. Now you'll notice uh, the difference between this and my last video is I've decided to kind of put two different angles on the screen at once. On the left hand side, you will notice that it always stays zoomed out so you can see the entire image as, as I'm creating it. Um, and as I start to color and things like that, the, uh, the sections will pop in. Um, and on the right, you can you can watch you know, as I'm as I was creating it, I was zooming in. You can see the, the exact process. Obviously, the video is a bit sped up. Otherwise, the, the video would have been way too long. This is the overall the entire process it took a few hours. Uh, part of it was was drawn on my Twitch stream. My Twitch channel is uh, twitch.tv slash pistols O'Brien. Um, I'm trying to get a more regular schedule for Twitch, so if you want to join a live schedule, uh, follow my social media accounts. I always I always either tweet or uh, message about 30 minutes before I start. This, this last time I got a little delayed, had a few things going on, but But if you want to join a live stream and, and watch as I go, you can see you know, the real-time process. Like I said, I post about 30 minutes or so before I actually start the stream. Now this version of Spider-Man that I'm drawing here is from the new, new as of the time of this recording, new video game Marvel Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. I recently got a chance to play it. Honestly, it's a phenomenal game. My personal review of the game is that it's just fantastic. Years ago, I was a fan of the game based on the Spider-Man 2 movie for the PlayStation 2. This, that game was the closest I thought that uh, they'd ever come to making you feel like Spider-Man while playing the game. This game completely blows it out of the water. It is, it does everything right that the original Spider-Man 2 game did, but it's just expanded in exactly the right ways to make it one of the best video games I've played all year. Now, the design of Spider-Man in the game is a little bit controversial because rather than the typical small black spider in the center of his chest, they decided to give him a large, larger spider um, for what they call his advanced suit. The large spider is white in color instead of black. And I'll admit it, it is very different than the typical idea of what Spider-Man looks like. Um, it's more its more akin to the, the black suit Spider-Man, which eventually turned into Venom in the comics. But in terms of size and obviously coloration, it's more similar to that suit. But he's, aside from this one, to my knowledge, he's never had a white spider on the red and blue suit before. And there's some other minor changes that they did. The boots, there's no discernible cutoff between the pants of the suit and the boots themselves. The original Spider-Man costume, there's a clear there's a clear line where, where the boots start, whereas in the the advanced suit he wears throughout the game. Basically the, 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 the pants of the suit turn into the boots. He also has a it looks like some kind of white reinforcement around one of his wrists that are, I'm assuming, something to do with either the, the, web, the web shooters or enhancing his strength. Um, the game doesn't really tell, but it doesn't really say. 
those are the least controversial parts of the suit. The, the parts of the suit that, that a lot of fans don't like is obviously that big white spider. Which personally, I think it's a it's a very different look, but I'm not opposed to it. I I don't hate it. I I think it's a perfectly fine design. And in fact, the comics have had some much more controversial designs than this. When Spider-Man was part of the Fantastic Four for a short time, after Human Torch had seemingly died, he had a mostly white suit. And I thought that one was much more controversial than this one here. This one here is a lot closer to his original red and blue suit than, than that one. So I don't really understand, well, I wouldn't say I don't understand, but I think the, the level of animosity towards it is a little unwarranted. Like, that's just my own opinion. Um, maybe sound off in the comments whether or not you like the new suit or not. One thing about the game, though, is it doesn't force you to wear this suit. In fact, there are, I believe, 20 different suits that you can unlock throughout the game including really the suit you start off with is his classic original suit. Um, it gets damaged early on in the game. Very minor spoiler I will say how, it's, how it gets damaged. Um, but I mean, as soon as you unlock the advanced suit, you also have the ability to unlock an undamaged version of his classic suit. So at most, you're only forced to wear the advanced suit for a very short time. Now, as I went over in my previous drawing video with the inking um, portion of, of, of a digital drawing that I, that I do, I, t I tend to try and do the lines in one even stroke rather than doing kind of a scratchy look that I do for the pencil lines. But here, uh, I'm getting rid of the... Uh, I, re I decided to redo the webbing because it's a little too close together. That's why I'm erasing it all here. But the reason why I tend to do it all in one continuous stroke is if I go slow and steady and, and try to be careful, scratchy looking, sketchy looking version of the line, it really shows up in the quality of the line itself. And I, it's just not a look that I'm particularly a fan of when it comes to the final inking lines. So what I like to do is try as much as I can to do it in one even stroke, even if I have to redo the line four or five times to get it right. And sometimes I'll even go past the end point, just so that I make sure that the, the line is nice and even, and that I can just, as you've no doubt noticed, I can go back and, and re-adjust where the line ended just by erasing. And sometimes I'll, if, if I need something to be symmetrical and one side looks better than the other, I'll just copy the, the, the side that looks best, flip it, and, and paste it in the correct spot. Uh, some people might say that that's cheating, but honestly, to me, the most important part is the, is the end product. And however, however you get to the end product is all that really matters. People aren't going aren't gonna to care if you're exactly how you got there, as long as you get there. In terms of art, as long as you're not stealing somebody else's art, or uh, claiming somebody else's art is your own, to me there's no such thing as cheating, aside from those examples. And as you can see, sometimes uh, when I block in the shadows, it doesn't quite look right, so I'll go back and, and readjust them. Uh, I don't really have a set way I determine where the shadows, what the shape of the shadows go. I have an idea of where a light source is coming from, and then I just fill in the kind of the blobs of, of shadow. Depending on what the color of the of the, of the material um, is, like for instance, the 
the areas where I have the larger uh, dark shadow blobs, it's a dark blue suit. So I tend to have more shadow on the dark blue part than I would on the red part of the suit. It's just because the, the red part has the, or will have the detail of the spider webs, in particular on Spider-Man. And I don't want the big dark areas of shadow to, to take away from the detail. And I actually tried to, on the, well, the spider itself, since I wanted, to be, wanted it to be that stark white spider, I, I decided to put minimal shading, at least for the, for the, the, the all black shadowing. Yeah, I decided to put minimal on, on the white spider itself. Uh, later on when I do a shading layer, I do end up putting some more shadow on that spider, but I didn't want this to, the stark whiteness of that spider to be overshadowed by big areas of black. Shadow is really something that I've definitely been working on a lot recently. Feel like that, I, that I've been making some some good progress. Maybe in, in the comments, um, if you have any pointers or if you uh, think something doesn't look quite right, just let me know. And, uh, I really appreciate any feedback, and even negative feedback. And let's know you watched it. Now, to to fill in the large areas. One thing that I, that I tend to do is sometimes I use the, the paint bucket tool, which allows you to fill in a large area at once. The only thing I don't like about the paint bucket tool, though, is it leaves a one pixel line around the edge of the line work. So I have to go in and re and cover that one pixel line. What I've been doing instead is I'll use the magic wand tool to select the whole area. And then I, in, in the settings, there's the option to expand a selection by one pixel. So I, I go into the select menu, so I'm going to go to modify and expand, and I enter in one pixel. And that usually allows it to fill in, it, it changes the, the size of the selection so that I can then fill in the, the shadow. And it will cover that one pixel line that I was talking about before. It's it's more steps, but it, it ends up being a little faster because the other way I have to I have to actually draw and kind of trace around that one pixel line. As I mentioned before, the the red part of the costume uh, has the spider web details. And I always try when when drawing Spider Man to not make the spider webs look flat, which can be a little tricky because you want the lines to kind of follow the natural curves of the body. Because if it's all, if it, if it doesn't deform at all around the curves of the body, then it just looks like a, uh, it just, it just doesn't look convincing at all. But by having it actually curve around the shapes of the body, it ends up looking like an actual pattern on the suit rather than a unconv an unconvincing drawing of spider webs. Just typically, that's with the, the type of the vertical lines. The, the actual curved web part themselves, it's just a matter of following the pattern from the, the, the section before it and kind of going around until you reach the edge of the web part of the costume. There's a lot of little details in the, the games, in the, the Spider-Man PlayStation 4 game, that I felt really added to the character. The, the little break um, right around where the tricep muscle is on his, uh, on his arm, the little break in the red that 
it's a, it's a very small detail, but it's it's just visually appealing. I think. It, it looks. I think I, th I just think it looks a little. I wouldn't want to say better than the classic suit because the classic suit's been around for well, since 1962, um, but it's a little more interesting, especially for a in a video game setting. Whereas in a comic book, the suit doesn't have to be all that uh, visually different in order for you to accept it because the, the comic book medium is inherently a little silly. And the first thing I, was, I, I like to put in before doing the colors, I like to do a gray layer underneath. Uh, basically, if I miss a section of a color, when gray shines through, it's a real easy way for me to tell that I missed something. Uh, and you'll notice here I'm using the, the path tool in order to select the areas in the costume. A lot of people like to use the polygonal lasso, and even I'll use it sometimes. But the path tool is so versatile that, that once you master it, honestly, nine times out of ten, I'll use that over any any, any other selection tool. Uh, specifically, if I'm using if I need a very intricate shape, because the path tool you can adjust the curve on it, whereas the polygonal lasso does only straight lines. And you can kind of fake a curve by doing many short straight lines, but it's still straight lines, whereas, like I said, the path tool actually lets you do curves. Another thing that's nice about the path tool is if you mess up on something or if you, if you need to reselect an area you've already selected, the path tool allows you to save the paths and you can turn it, turn it back into a selection at time. So that way you don't have to reselect everything. think that this video is sponsored or something. Obviously not. This is my second real video on this uh, on this channel, so of course I'm not sponsored or anything like that. If, if Sony, by chance, if you're watching and you know, decide you want to sponsor me, that's great. Go right ahead. That's uh, I'm open to, to any sponsorship, but um, I digress. The, uh, what, I, what I wanted to say here is that the I can't recommend the game at I, I knew I was going to like the game um, just by watching the trailers. Um, I, had a, I had a really good feeling on it, but actually playing the game, it's honestly, it's a must buy. It's, it's one of those that most times when playing a video game, I, I wouldn't say that a game is worth getting a system over. Like if you only have uh, an Xbox One or one of the older generation, PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360. Um, I typically wouldn't say you know, that, a system, that, that one game makes a system. This game comes really close. I would almost say that it's worth it. If you're a big fan of Spider-Man, it's worth purchasing a system, honestly. And since, since I didn't put the so the, the lines over the white spider in certain areas, I reactivated the sketch layer in order to add the shadow in to, to know exactly where like the different muscle lines were uh, when I was drawing the shadow on the white spider. You notice that I used the one shade of gray for the entire shadow. 
I don't like to get too complicated with my sh with my shading. Basically, I have the, the dark black for the for the darkest areas of shadow, and then the kind of mid tone gray. And then when I use the blending modes on the layer, basically I will uh, set the blending modes set it so that it'll uh, darken the color that it's on top of. So like the this gray color will make the the red look a little darker wherever the gray is, has been drawn in. If you use too many layers of, of gray, everything gets kind of kind of muddy, and to, to me, it, it's it's a comic book style image. The, the bright, vibrant colors are more important. Um, so that's why I tend to use the just the one shade of gray along with the blacks in order to do most of my shading. I didn't do it for this particular image, but sometimes I'll also like to add in the white for a, uh, a highlight. Um, but for this particular image, the, the, one, the one shade of gray was enough. If you have any suggestions or requests for my, for my next drawing video, um, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, I'm open to pretty much anything. Um, if you think I should do like a drawing challenge, something like that, I would be more than happy to. I've also thought about creating a, a straw poll and have have uh, people vote on different attributes for a character, like if the character is male or female, if the character is a warrior or a, a number of different classes, just uh, and basically let the results in the straw poll dictate what I draw. Um, that's the project that I've been thinking about doing. Um, if you'd like to see any of that, let me know. And if you have any any unique suggestions, feel free. I mean, at this point, the the channel is still very small, and if I get a request in in one of the comments, I'm very likely to go ahead and do the request. And I try uh, I try my best to respond to any comment that I get. If there's a question or anything, go ahead and ask it. I'll, I'll answer it to the best of my ability. And if I don't know the answer to something, uh, I'll look it up, and if I can't find it, I'll be honest with you. My last, my last video was the anime uh, st uh, style drawing, the, the Deku from my Hero Academia, uh, Zuzuku Minoria. Uh, and I mentioned that my typical style is more of a Western um, comic book style rather than a, you know, a manga or anime style. Um, and I think that really comes through on this piece, which is obviously a, uh, an American you know, comic book character, Spider-Man. <laughs> Also rotate the canvas uh, as you've noticed throughout the video, uh, so that when doing those those lines, the, the one stroke lines I mentioned before, make it look smooth. Uh, I'll rotate the canvas so that the the line that I'm drawing is a little easier to draw. When I activated the, the blending mode for the uh, to make the, the shadow stand out. I also turned down the opacity on it a little bit so that it wasn't quite as dark. And here I'm kind of adding, I'm gonna add a, 
little shape to the background just to make it a little more visually appealing. I actually forgot to add in his web on his right hand, but that's fine. I, uh, I just I just didn't decide to go back to it. But that's basically it here. That's this is my drawing of Spider-Man with the PlayStation 4 version of his suit. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, if you have any suggestions, go right ahead. Um, if you like, if you enjoyed your time here, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, every little bit helps. Uh, if you want to see more of my work, please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to make sure you get all um, notifications. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope to have uh, another video up next week. Maybe I'll do one of those challenges that I mentioned before. But like I said, thank you so much for watching, and hope you come back the, for my next video. Thank you very much.